Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to learn how to copy a motion path. Uh, we're currently studying this in Chapter 4 of our textbook, so if you want to turn in your book to page 414 and follow along with me as I go through this, you're more than welcome to. The first thing I'm going to do is open up one of our data files, fl4 underscore 2, which looks like this. And then I'm going to go to my file menu and click on Save As to save this with a different file name. And I'm going to save this as Tween Edits. Tween Edits. And I can just hit Enter and it will automatically save it as a flash file. Now this movie has a motion tween in it that animates from frame 1 to frame 40 on the timeline. You can see that in two places. Notice on the stage you have these orange dots here. That's a motion tween. And also if you look at the timeline, you see you have keyframes in every frame on the timeline from frame 1 to frame 40, indicating that there is animation going on there. Now, on your timeline, I'm going to click the New Layer button at the bottom of the timeline, and a new default layer pops up with the default name, Layer 1. I'm going to change that to something that's more descriptive. I'm going to double-click on the name, Layer 1, and that opens up a box so that I can give this layer a more descriptive name. We're going to call this Biker 2, and I'm going to hit the Enter key so that takes effect. And one thing I want you to notice here on the timeline, now that we've created this new layer, the new layer has the exact number of frames as the movie itself does. It has a total of 50 frames. Now at this point, I'm going to click frame number one on the Biker 2 layer to make sure that's active. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my selection tool over here on the Tools panel. So I'm going to make sure my Selection tool is active on the Tools panel simply by clicking on it. And then I'm going to make sure my Library panel is displayed. It is. I have two objects in my Library panel right now. One is a Graphics folder. I don't need to worry about that now. What I am concerned with is the Biker object, GBiker, in the Library panel. So I'm going to click on that. And that shows me what exactly is in the biker object in the library panel in this image preview window here. And I'm going to drag a copy of this G biker object to the stage, and I'm going to place it just above the biker that we already have on the stage, like so. And if you look at figure 17 in your book, you can see the placing of this particular object. So we have a new instance of the biker symbol placed on the stage at this point. And I'm going to go to the biker layer that we already have on the stage. Notice the biker layer has keyframes in every frame from frame 1 to frame 40. We're about to copy those frames and put them in the new layer we created a couple minutes ago, biker 2. So we uh, first thing we have to do is just click any frame in the biker layer, and you'll notice that moves the biker to the position of the frame that you clicked on, and you'll notice the motion path for that particular biker is now displayed on the stage. Okay, And one other thing I want you to notice, if you uh, look at the biker layer, You'll notice I have a highlight there in the keyframe that I clicked in. Okay, And one other thing I need to do, click the original biker on the stage. Now, when you click an individual frame, the biker may get a blue box around it. As soon as you click that frame, that indicates that the biker is selected. And notice if the biker is already selected, when I click on it, the blue box disappears. Now, that means the biker is not selected. So I'm going to click the biker again to bring the blue box back up. And what I really want you to notice here, if you look down at your timeline, you'll notice the entire tween span from frame 1 to frame 40 is highlighted in blue, indicating that I've got the biker selected 
on my stage right now. So I can actually just copy all of these individual keyframes right now by going to my Edit menu, highlighting Timeline, and then choosing Copy Motion. And that copies all of those keyframes that are on the Biker layer at this point. Now to paste them into our Biker 2 layer, I click Biker 2 to make that layer active on the stage. Go to my Edit menu, highlight Timeline, and then Paste Motion. And at this point, you should notice two things on the screen. One, you should now see a green motion path on the Biker 2 layer on the stage. And if you look at your timeline now, you should see that the Biker 2 layer has keyframes in every frame from frame 1 to frame 40 because we just copied those from the Biker layer. Now, if I play the movie at this point, and it doesn't matter, you don't have to be at the starting position to play the movie, so I'm just going to hit Enter on my keyboard. And that's going to play the movie. I'll play that one more time from the beginning. And you can see that both bikers now have motion on the timeline. I'm going to drag my timeline back to the beginning here like that. And I'm going to hide the biker layer by coming down to my timeline and making sure I'm in the show or hide all layers column. That's the column that's indicated by an eyeball at the top. And I'm going to click the eyeball button for the original biker layer. And you notice the biker disappears from the stage at that point, leaving only biker 2. And at this point, I'm going to go to frame number 1 of the biker 2 layer. Notice the biker 2 becomes active on the stage. You get the blue box around the biker once that becomes active. And at this point, I'm going to click the Free Transform tool on my panel there. And notice the biker gets a box with several little squares around it. Well, we're going to get back to those squares in a minute. But the first thing I'm going to do is go to my Modify menu, highlight the Transform category, and choose Flip Horizontal. And you'll notice at that point, when I flip horizontal, and let's play the movie at this point. What that does is that reverses the position of the biker, and now the biker is actually pointed backwards as the biker is making the leap from left to right in the animation. All right, so I'm going to go back to frame number one on the biker layer. That's my starting point. And now I'm going to uh, move the path. Before I do that, I want to click the path to select it. You'll notice when I do that, I get a big box around the path. And you can use your down arrow keys to move the path down. If you keep pressing the arrow keys, you notice how slowly that actually moves the path. If you hold the down arrow key down for a bit, that actually moves the path a little bit quicker. And you want the path oriented to the point where uh, the biker is actually touching the ramp or close to the bottom of the ramp. Okay, Sort of like that. That should be fine at this point. Click the biker object to select the biker. Here at this point. There we go. And if you go to Modify, Transform, Flip Horizontal, you'll notice that changes the direction of the biker. And if this Auto Recovery box pops up, make sure the Enable Auto Recovery option is checked, and then click on Yes to get rid of that. Okay? Now at this point, you can use the Free Transform tool to rotate the biker as needed, one way you can rotate is this. If you notice, when I float my mouse pointer over the upper left square down there at the bottom, my mouse pointer changes to a half circle. When I see that half circle, I can hold down the left mouse button and rotate just a little bit 
so that I'm rotating the biker so that the biker is a bit more oriented to the ramp there. And once I have the biker in a good position, I can actually use my down arrow keys to make sure that the biker is a bit closer to the ramp, like that. Once I'm happy with the positioning of the biker, and let me just edit that just a little more by rotating up just a bit. There we go. We'll go with that. Okay, I've got the biker oriented to the ramp a bit better. And if I play the movie, I now notice that the biker is a bit more oriented to the ramp. And in this entire lesson, I have copied a motion pass, moved the pass, and oriented the biker a bit better so that the positioning looks a bit more realistic for this particular exercise. And we'll continue working on this in the next video.